And hello there. I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another episode of Funky Monkey at the Movies, the last of 2017. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And as it's the last of 2017, I think you can guess which movie we've been to see tonight. Yes, it's Star Wars, Episode 8, The Last Jedi. And, oh my goodness, where to begin? Let's begin at the beginning. Well, at the beginning of Episode 7, the Resistance had a base. At the beginning of Episode 8, the Resistance has a base. And then it kind of doesn't. And after that... It really does seem like a tragedy of errors. Everything that can go wrong goes wrong. But, does it? Well, the Resistance, for everything they go through, they don't get very many breaks in this movie. No. I think it's, yeah, overall it's got a very Empire Strikes Back kind of tone to it. People probably expected from the, uh, the way Episode 7 was. With uh, episode 7 was almost like a blow by blow remake of episode 4, where episode 8 isn't kind of like that, but for Empire Strikes Back. But I think it strikes the same sort of tone, because the uh, the rebels, or resistance, or whatever they're supposed to be called now, um, were on the back foot, and so close to losing. But you never really got that feeling, or I didn't get that feeling. You were cut off from a lot of the rebellion in Empire. He is focused mainly on the Falcon and Luke training. Yeah. And of course the uh, shenanigans and machinations in Cloud City. But you're kind of forgetting that the attack on Hoth, I mean, the the fact that they lost their base at the end of Star Wars, so they have to evacuate at some point. There was a whole campaign about that in um, some of the uh, Star Wars games of the mid-90s. Yeah. Well, I suppose they didn't lose their base at the end of episode 4, but at some point they mm-hmm. had to evacuate. And then, and then they ended up turning uh, some others, and then finally Hoth, yeah. and then they had to evacuate Hoth, yeah. and then it was a bunch of ships near Sullust before finally moving the fleet to the sanctuary moon of Endor. Don't forget, like, obviously Han Solo got captured at the end of Empire... And Luke got his hand cut off, and he kind of got whipped by Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. And then he had the traumatic experience to find and get the Darth Vader's his dad. That sent him, changed him. There was conflict. There was good in Vader. Well, Be- I was kind of disappointed that there wasn't more to Ray. You know, they're there uh, telling you, oh, his her parents were nobody at all. Sorry, that's probably a spoiler, but uh, yeah. The parents were nobody at all, apparently. Yeah. Nobody important. But yeah, nobody at all, apparently. So they no relation to any of the Skywalkers, or no relations to Obi-Wan Kenobi, or anybody like that. That was a crack theory, though. What, there could have been a relation to Obi-Wan Kenobi? Yeah. I don't know, I thought there was supposed to be some clone wars episodes where he falls in love with some Mandalorian princess or something. So, you know, there could have been things happening there. Yeah, and saved his DNA for cloning the female body. Well, for a minute, when she was in that cave, I thought it was the last cave Dark Force thing that Luke had had, like, foreshadowing overtones. And when, like, she was in that cave and there were, like, multiple hers and she touched the mirror and it was just her, I thought she was going to turn out to be a clone. But I guess the whole cave foreshadowing thing isn't a thing this time around. Well, we don't know. There's still another episode to go. Yeah. Snoke has turned out to be a bit of a big old nothing burger as well. Oh, Snoke was definitely a nothing burger. I mean, he was quite intimidating and things. But, yeah, then he just died like a bitch. He did. He did. Yeah, I didn't get to find out anything about him, where he came from, whether he was one of the Sith or not. Who he really was. Yes. Though, most likely, they'll probably want to do something with that now. Yeah. There'll probably be a Star Wars story about him at some point. I think they toned down Rey as well. Like, after a lot of people sort of complained about how she could do everything in the Force all of a sudden. 
not that it kind of bothered me that much because it being Star Wars, you can just say, well, it's the Force. But a lot yeah. of people said she was the Mary Sue. And she seemed a lot less Mary Sue in this. Not that she couldn't do things still. I mean, she was still good with the lightsaber and stuff, considering she'd had no lightsaber training. Yeah. Uh-huh. I thought Luke was a bit of a wuss to start off with, but then he became awesome at the end. I mean, well, that's the way. All those um, Atats, I don't know what they're called now. Those monkey Atats or Atat version 2s. Atat V2s. When they all started shooting at him, I thought this is going to go one of two ways. So they're going to die and become a false ghost, or he's going to do something badass and Skywalker eat and survive. And of course, the answer was a mix of the two. I mean, he wasn't even really there. It was like he, he was a false projection from the other side of the galaxy, which was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which explain why like, he didn't actually really um, engage Kylo Ren with the lightsaber. He was all like false zen and ducking and diving and all that stuff. Yeah, he didn't want to tip his hand too soon. Yeah. And he gave them all time to escape before dying. But is he really dead? He's a force ghost now, anyway. Yeah, he's a force ghost, isn't he? Because, like, the robe did the falling down thing. Yeah. At the end. I mean, which I thought was odd, because they've killed off all the other characters, except Princess Leia, who's dead in real life, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I thought they were going to go with that. She would be dead. Like, when they blew the bridge up. Yeah, well... But then she went, went and uh, was awesome in Skywalker and managed to survive deep space and use the Force to pull herself back into the ship. Pretty cool. Yeah. I'm glad that Finn and Poe got more to do this time. Yeah. Yeah. They may have to be. And of course, the Williams soundtrack, which I think is probably what a lot of the supposed hardcore fans it's going to be the only thing they like but uh, we won't go into that No, I think hardcore fans will always love it you could just serve them up any Star Wars and they'll love it apart from Star Wars episodes 1 to 3 but I think some people would actually defend those too yeah well there's generations now that was the first Star Wars they saw um, whatever his name is Benicio Del Toro or Guillermo del Toro. Benicio del Toro. Yeah, oh, I don't know which one. Which, but that one was kind of irritating. But well, he irritates me in every film I've ever seen him in. Mm. I don't know why. He just does. I wanted to get on to uh, the message. Some people had suggested online that the message of this one was sort of an ending of the old orders and an embracing of the new. I kind of got that from Kylo Ren. That's kind of what he wanted. For me, the the message was more a case of um, hope springs eternal and that, you know, they were starting their new rebellion and they were the fire that would ignite the new rebellion. And light themselves under the backsides of the First Order. Yeah. I mean, that kind of came out <laughs> of where It's like, oh, the force of the First Order are now so powerful they can just take over the entire galaxy. Even though they lost the last film, their super secret weapon base got blown up. Well, sometimes you don't need a super secret weapon base. Sometimes. You just need a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the action was good. I thought the bit with those giant leggy things was going to be a bit irritating. I mean, I think maybe they could have cut that a bit, but it was still pretty good. Yeah. It wasn't as irritating as I thought it was going to be. The music was quite good. You know, there was a lot of action. Yeah. As you would expect from Star Wars. Yeah. I guess it was like the theme music that kind of did it, but I thought that cave bit with the Falcon was awesome as well. Replaying the uh, old battle music from um, the escape from the Death Star. And it kind of reminded you of the, the time when the Falcon was flying through the Death Star to to blow it up. Ah, the second Death Star. Yeah, that was a time. Actually, that's those scenes in the throne room, in Snoke's throne room, were very reminiscent of Luke, Vader and the Emperor from Return of the Jedi. Yeah, they were. But then they went their own way. Yeah. 
So I mean, I'm not really sure what's happening with Kyle out Ren. He's just a little bit crazy. He's very much lost to the dark side. But I think, quite possibly, this is late dark side. When the dark side has a hold on you too strongly, you lose all kinds of control. I don't know, he hasn't got any signs of dark force corruption. Which is like something that's supposedly supposed to happen with Sith and things. To get all like scarred up and stuff. Did you notice what had happened to him? He got a scar. Well, that was like from that lightsaber fight with Ray at the end of the last film. I mean, didn't have like red eyes or yellow eyes or whatever. I mean, that was um, what happened with Anakin when he was first turned into the Dark Tower, wasn't he? He got yellow eyes. Well, that was back during the days of the extended universe. No, oh. in the in the movie in um, in episode Revenge three, of the Sith, he definitely had different colour eyes at one point. Well, that'll be one to look out for in the next episode. In summary of myself, I definitely thought it was uh, well, it was definitely Star Wars, and I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. It looked like hope was lost so many times, but somehow every time they managed to escape just long enough to survive. And now they have the chance to rebuild and perhaps crush the First Order. I liked how Luke got schooled by Yoda again. Oh, Yoda. And also those puffing rat things were not annoying we were led to believe. Yeah, the pools were barely noticeable. I don't know, I don't know if we have uh, said how awesome this film is. Good music. Great music. Good pacing. The acting was pretty good. Good acting. Even though some of the characters irritated me slightly, I'm really picky. Yes, I mean, you are. Voice Admiral. Didn't barely do anything. Well, she kind of got on my nerves being all like bossy. But she come good in the end. Yeah. Go on then, final score. Uh, let's give it 9 out of 10. And why not? Because it's Christmas. Nine out of ten. Yeah, why not? Because it's Star Wars. Because it's Christmas and because it's Star Wars, it's nine out of ten from both of us. So again, this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. And uh, all of the e-begging will be in the links in the description below. Give him money. And uh, don't forget to visit us at minds.com forward slash two teens. This has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. And we'll see you at the movies in 2018. Bye.